I'm smiling because this thing's fun and it looks a little absurd with a 9mm can on it and the brace. Anyways, this is the Czech Small Arms Scorpion brought in by Checkpoint USA in 380. For those of you that follow us on our other media outlets have already seen a little bit of footage and a little bit of uh, fun from this. Now we're going to give it a proper review using PPU 94 grain ammunition. And if you're wondering about the can, it's a 9mm can. And one of the things that I've noticed with 380 is it's pretty much all subsonic or pretty darn close. Not sure how this PPU is going to fare, but it makes it for a really fun, quiet thing. You don't have to find specialty ammo. We have an ABC zone target out at 25 yards, so I got something to aim at. If I miss, you're really going to tell <laughs> with the subsonic and the can on. But uh, let's see how it goes. The, the sights are 150 meter or 75 meter. A little optimistic in my opinion. Going to try it at 75 meter. And uh, there we go. Do you have to watch out? The charging knobs are reciprocating in, on both ends of the gun. So you kind of have to do a low magwell hold. Here we are, full mag plus one. The silence of those misses is deafening. Alright, time to go regular YouTube guy style and just spray it off into the distance. Don't worry, there's a big backstop out there. But we're testing to see if the mag runs. <laughs> and I want to show off how quiet it is. Throws the brass way up there. So much fun. And it exfoliates your forehead when you have a can on here because the ejection port being right there means you get blasted in the head with that exhaust. Done. Enough with the bullshit talk. Uh, we'll have some actual testing here now. Go through our what's for dinner. And if we have enough daylight, get to the accuracy portion. Doing that without the can because the can does, of course, enhance the back pressure and give you an unauthentic test which is why you don't see us using cans in our tests. It's not fair to the gun, not fair to the ammo. Let's keep going. Who's hungry? It's the what's for dinner test. So we're gonna be shooting three rounds of each of these loads. You'll notice that the casing type, the bullet shape and profile, and the projectile weight, and of course, therefore, velocity are different in each of them. What we're looking to see is can it feed from the bolt being held open, is there enough energy to cycle and feed a next round of the same type, and then will it lock open on empty? One little conspiracy here, old school Remington Golden Sabre, 102 grain, looks like that. New Remington Ultimate Defense Compact Handgun, 102 grain, looks like that. I'm kind of thinking these are the same loads, but different packaging must be different, and of course the prices are different. Anyways, so let's get into the dinner test. with the Liberty Ammunition Civil Trainer. This is a 65 grain grain round. These mags are tight. And I'm putting this on. I have to take it off a safe in order to be able to run the action. So I don't need any feedback on that. But it did lock it open. Nice. And next is the Legend Pro 80 grain in the copper hollow point. Oh, it flinched and it did not fire. Did it feed? I don't think it did. Little tiny thing is so hard to... Round came out. Round did come out. Lock it open. All right. <laughs> These magazines aren't the easiest to load. They're not, and I almost had it, but you really have to smack up on this thing, and I'll just have to remember that in the in the next bits. Nope. 
It did feed. And it is in there. It was in there. So we swapped mags to one that we know that works. There is one, maybe two, that give us a little bit of an issue. We're going to try this again. And I'm slamming up on that as hard as I can. Sounded a little bit better. Still nothing. And it's really in there this time. There it comes. And it is squashing that round down into that. So no go for the legend. So we're going to go ahead and call legend a fail at this point and move on to our third round. This is the Winchester Silver Tip Jacketed Hollow Point in 85 grain. Oh, that fed much nicer. And it locks open. And next is the Federal Premium Hydro Shop. This is 90 grains. So moving up there a little bit. That did not feed all the way. I suspected. Take two with the Hydro Shock. <laughs> it is up there. And it is not feeding. See, it's not closing at all. Well, I mean, partially, but not enough to fire. We'll try one more magazine, and this might be a fail. All right, we're going to try that Federal Hydro Shock one more time. you got to keep in mind while we're doing this, folks, that uh, this gun was designed long before this ammunition, and the gun wasn't originally in 380. It was a 32 ACP. So it didn't go all the way at first. I pulled back just a little bit and it did seat. Let's see if it'll shoot. And it locked open. Next we'll do the Hornady American Gunner. This is 90 grain. Oh, I had to take it off safe. And it chambered all the way. Open. Hit the steel pretty hard. It did. And I'll tell you that button, you'll only remember to, you'll only forget to move your thumb once. Let's try this PPU defense line. This is 94 grain. The last one was a little punchy. Safety off. Safety off. And it still did not go up all the way. There it went. Have to check that out. Locked open. Those are really fun. Also PPU, also 94 grain. This is the handgun line. This is a, a round nose. There we go. sparks with that. Yeah, that stuff was feisty. It was. Federal Premium's Personal Defense HST in 99 grain. HST Micro. Micro, yes. It's got the little gun right there. And you know, folks, the more words go into the name of the ammunition, the more they can charge you for it. Well, and it's got to be better. Ooh. Maybe Micro makes a difference. There. so bad. It looked pretty stout. Yeah, but it was consistent. Remington Ultimate Defense Compact Handgun 102 grain. A lot of words in that title. A lot of words in the title. And so Graham said in What's for Dinner that he thinks this in the next round might be the same but upon a little bit further glance, I noticed that the 
the mouths of them are actually opened differently. One is a little bit wider than the other. These mags are so sticky. This thing is so much fun. <laughs> so Reddington Golden Saber in 102 grain. lock open. So folks, we are currently, I want to say, about 10 yards away from Tia, who's just got the uh, PPU 94 grain full metal jacket in there, and I wanted to show you what this ejection looks like. So she's got 10 rounds, she's going to fire at a moderate cadence, and I'm going to try to get in camera just how nuts that ejection is. Kind of losing it from the skylight, but hopefully you saw when we were up close, it goes straight up and uh, heads, I don't know, maybe 10 feet in the air or so, and then ends up landing not far from the shooter. It's kind of fun. So much fun. <laughs> so for the accuracy testing, we have this interesting improvised setup here, resting the trigger guard on the block because, well, the magazine wobbles in and the front end is curved and a little sloped. These were meant to be compact pistols, not bench guns. <laughs> <laughs> we're used in the PPU 94 grain, and we've just got a green target out there at 25 yards. And like I said, the uh, sights are set for 75 meters. But uh, we'll see how it goes. T and I will each put five shots through here for a 10 shot group to get a feel for it. He is up first. Shoots much differently this way. Tiny little, I can't even get my knuckles between the grip and the block here. This is interesting. So here's our groups. T is claiming this one based on what she remembers from her sight picture. There's mine. They're both about two inch by two inch uh, using budget ammunition and iron sights. Now, obviously, you all have seen us shoot iron sights before at 100 yards um, with rifle sights. These sights were not meant for that. These sights are a close in, defensive, spray, get off me kind of a defensive sight that for some reason were set for 75 meters. Interestingly enough though, we didn't hit way high for 75 meter sights. So I'm not sure what's going on there. There's no provision for mounting an optic. So unfortunately without a true vise, we can't really test this thing for its absolute accuracy. But the point being, when aiming here at a 6 inch circle, you can hit within a 6 inch circle at 25 yards. So, when I brought this home, to you. <laughs> Sidewinder by Matador Arms, folks. Too much fun on this gun. Tia wasn't too excited about this thing. I was just giddy. After having spent some time with it, what do you think about it now? And did it rock you like a hurricane? <laughs> it doesn't rock me too much, but it does make me really happy. Um, maybe it's because I shoot it well. Um, or maybe it's just because it's pretty fun to shoot. I mean, there's just so much fun nuances about this compared to you know, the normal guns that we would shoot, a handgun or a rifle. Um, and 
I, I don't know, I just, I really like this thing. We have to uh, argue often about who's going to shoot first that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, um, true to its original intent, you know, these things were originally in 32 ACP for one. Uh, I opted for the 380 version just because you get a little more oomph and ammo is a little less expensive, a little more readily available. Um, they were meant for tankers, support personnel, things like that. As a very compact firearm, they had a, a wire flip over stock. Um, it was kind of a spray get off me gun um, with a pretty decent cyclic rate as a submachine gun. Uh, this of course being semi-auto, I think it's still loads of fun. It's a blast. It's got funky styling and then with the uh, matador arms <laughs> sidewinder there you get to do that and who doesn't want to do that you know if I haven't done that once I've just seen it displayed many times and sometimes I fail <laughs> and it gets awkward uh, I mean if you can't be the winter soldier and have it on your back and whip it off with your uh, bionic arm then you might as well see that was a fail <laughs> that was a fail <laughs> it happens um, Really cool. The I hope the footage captured the ejection of this thing because it's it's a hoop just in its own right. And with a can on it, it spins the brass a little faster and you actually get kind of a buzzing bee sound uh, of the brass going through the air. I don't know if we're going to be able to capture that or not. We might give it one more try. We're running out of daylight here on a very rare day. <laughs> here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm certain we'll have a chance in the future to maybe catch that world buzz noise that you get from it. <laughs> for those of you who are single, that is significant other code talk for I'm cold, let's go home. Anyways, the Czech Small Arms Scorpion in 380, they also I guess have them in 22 uh, and a few other calibers. It's just really cool and tell me that's not a portable size. James Bondish. Dish, maybe <laughs> bad guy from James Bond. Anyways, that's the Scorpion. Thanks for watching.